Hi booktube, I am here to do the April wrap up of things I have read uh, a little bit early, but that's fine because there's no way I'm finishing middle March before the end of April and that's what I'm working on right now. You can see my poop, pooped pooch right here. He's uh, having a not so good day today, so trying to be nearby to him and as supportive of him as I can be and just taking care of everything. I've got a little bit of time before he gets his midday pill, so figured I would bang this out. Right, so starting with the, I read this, it's a giant manga. It is the first volume of The Complete Cheese Sweet Home by Konami Kanada. And it is also a anime that you can watch. I've watched a couple episodes on YouTube but it's the story of a kitten who gets lost and finds his forever home and learns to pee in the potty properly and enjoys milk and foods and his little friend the big bear cat who has to leave of course there there's uh, hijinks which ensue when his family who finds his her her she is a girl when her family who finds her and wants to adopt her has to move because they live in a no cat apartment and the big bear cat that is Chi's friend and shows Chi how to hunt prey uh, has to move because they get found out and Chi looks a lot like my cat Frank so I had a great time reading it and Chi also has a lot of the mannerisms of Frank so quick night read giant manga made me happy. I think the first thing, I'm going to try and, re and review these in order, the first thing I finished was Joan Didion's The Year of Magical Thinking, which talks about her daughter's serious illness and the passing of her husband. And I shouldn't have read this when I read this because I was so depressed and so sad and it was so heartbreaking I just couldn't handle it. It is very well told. It's a wonderful memoir. It um, really deals with how she processed grief during the first year. But don't read it if you're in a bad place. I had read... Um, what else had I read by her? I read something else by her. Play It As It Lays. That's what I've read previously from her. And I believe I have the white album to read. I do enjoy her writing, I enjoy her style, I enjoy what she has to say. Parts of it were lost on me because I don't really understand a lot of the New York landmarks or a lot of the California landmarks, having not been to either place or really, I've never been immersed in those particular locales, but she doesn't make it to the point that you want to throw the book down. Either way, if you're looking for a good memoir about, you know, processing grief, it's good. It just came a little too soon for me. The next thing I read was Cut by Patricia McCormick. This is a young adult novel and it is put out by Push Fiction. Patricia McCormick currently lives in Manhattan. She spent three years researching uh, and writing Cut. This is her first novel. It's actually a pretty good first novel if you like the genre and the genre I would put it in is like Go Ask Alice, uh, Girl Interrupted. We follow our main character Callie who has discovered that she enjoys self-harm. Subsequently she gets hospitalized for it and we see a cast of characters she meets on the ward she's kept in and basically how she goes from being put in to her leaving and it's from the perspective of Callie and she tends to talk in her head to people when she's not expressing it verbally so very interesting character and a story of, of, of realization of, of self-harm and a journey to healing through that so a good teenage book a genre I actually read a lot of. I don't know why. Then I went and read Everything I Never Told You by Celestine. 
I've heard a lot of people love this book. It's a New York Times book review, notable book of the year. I thought it was okay. It took me like two days to read it and I didn't care. In the end, I didn't care. And I don't know if that's the mark. Like, it'd be a good beach read because I was engaged for the like five minutes it took me to read it. But I didn't care at the end. I didn't want to know the answer. It didn't bug me. I, it wasn't a whodunit mystery. I was prepared for something completely different based off of what the back had told me as Lydia is dead um, and they don't know this and it's everybody's way of processing that Lydia is dead and ultimately what happened to Lydia that caused her to be dead because we don't know in the beginning why she's dead. We just know that she's dead. and. In the midst of it, the family has turmoil, the, the father goes off and has an affair to deal with it, the mother has to deal with her own issues with her, pre with her mother and how she projected them onto her daughter. You'd think I'd care, but I don't. I gave it three stars because I thought if you read it on a beach it would be good for a couple days. But honestly, it's, it, it's going... It's getting exchanged for a different book. That's what's happening. I'm not, you know. Then I read, uh, yes. Then I read, thank goodness I read this afterwards. And maybe because I read it afterwards, that's why I liked it so much. I got an arc of uh, Things We Lost in the Fire stories by Mariana Enrique. And. I don't like short stories, but I loved this short story collection. They weren't too short. They were approximately 40 pages a piece, give or take. So they weren't flash fiction. They were a bit bigger. I will tell you that um, The Neighbor's Courtyard, don't read it if you don't like animal violence. I read it and I didn't know that and it really pissed me off. So skip that one, otherwise uh, the short stories are great, the characters are great, the way she sets up Argentina is also interesting. Um, I had gone through some of the Goodreads uh, critiques of it and found that a lot of people felt that it was uh, one note or that e each story hit the same thing. And I just, I didn't find that. When I read Mexico, which was another group of short stories based off of, like, Mexico, um, I found those ones to be all the same. Like, it was like, oh, here's a drug kingpin, here's, a, here's something that happens involving a drug kingpin, and here's a result, and you're done. And here's the next story, which involves someone who's into the drug kingpins, or, or a narc, or something. Like, it was just, it was drugs, narcs, and how they, in like how regular life in Mexico revolves around them. And it was very one note. This, I did not think so much, was one note. It does deal with a lot of similar themes. They're all very um, kind of, it's, it's a horror in so much as like Shirley Jackson or just that, that eking horror. There's not a lot of gore. There is some gore in some of them, but not enough that I was, I would say, oh, this is really gory or anything, but there's a lot of unsettlingness. Um, the Dirty Kid, that one was very, very wonderful. Uh, Under the Black Water, also very bizarre. I just really loved the stories. I think there was one story I didn't like one and then there was the the story that involved animal violence which I also didn't like in the end because I don't like animal violence so out of the 12 stories in here there were two that didn't speak to me I gave it four stars I thought it was really well done and that never happens for short stories unless it's Margaret Atwood so I read that it redeemed the month so far then I read Half Broke Horses, a true life novel by Jeanette Walls, who is also the author of The Glass Castle. This, of course, was a New York Times book review, 10 Best Books of 2009. I had read not The Glass Castle. I still haven't read The Glass Castle. I read the other one, The Silver Star. I think it's called The Silver Star. And so this is a story about her great grandmother, or her grandmother. Not her mother, but her grandmother. And her 
hard scrabble life from farmstead to being a teacher to wanting to be an aviator to her the collapse of her first marriage through her second marriage and all kinds of crazy calamitousness that ensues this woman is hardcore back before hardcore women existed and i think that jeanette wall really wrote a, a lovely tribute and normally when i see the print is this small i start getting worried that maybe i've bitten off more than i can chew at 300 pages but it went by super fast i enjoyed every minute of it and if you like stories of women surmounting all odds and the other thing that I found about this is, okay, when I read Oliver Twist, when I read a lot of Charles Dickens, we have a very passive protagonist who just keeps getting crapped on and takes it and is like, oh, but the world will get better. And it never actually does. And that's what irritates me about, hold on, about Charles Dickens. So she keeps getting kicked in the face, basically. But she gets up and does something about it. And I think that's the difference that I can accept in terms of this book and actually enjoy it because she's not passive. She does get slammed down again and again. And it, it's like the March of the Penguins movie when, you know, like bad stuff happens and then you're hoping for something good and it looks like something good's gonna happen and then Morgan Freeman goes, and then, and baby penguins freeze to death or something. Sometimes it does feel like that, but it still feels like a triumph of wills and ultimately a, a loving tribute. So if you enjoy those styles, give it a, give it a read. The last thing I finished this month was Cured, The Tale of Two Imaginary Boys by Lowell Tolhurst or Lawrence Tolhurst, who it was a co-founding member of The Cure, part of the original trio, The Lull Years, if you will. And I'll be honest, I liked it, but I liked it because I'm a hardcore Cure fan. If you are not a hardcore cure fan this is not gonna make any sense to you or rather it will but will you really care about his descent into alcoholism or how that affected the band no if you're if you're not a hardcore cure fan you don't want to know what an ex-member did in the 1970s now if it was Robert Smith I think we would all very much care about what he did in the 1970s but he's not talking so did I enjoy it yes I gave it three stars but that's only if you're a hardcore Cure fan. If you're not, maybe wait until it's in paperback, pick it up from your library. If you really want to know about like how it was to tour during the era of 17 Seconds and Faith and how they hooked up and started the band, that's all cool. But the second half is more about his alcoholism and how it got him kicked out of the band and how there was the court proceedings where he was trying to get more money and subsequently the reconciliation that occurred in 2010 or 2000 was it 2000 or 2010 2000 2000 was when they they, they reconciled so his reconciliation with Robert take for it what it is if you like music biographies it's a good one if you don't care about the band or music biographies just walk on by but for me, it made me want to put on black eyeliner and play around listening to Trilogy. That is everything I managed to eke out this month, in this month of April, which is what, six books? So I'll consider that a win. Seven? I'll consider it a win because I'm still plodding through Middlemarch. I'm about 300 pages and some in, and I'm taking my time with it because I'm enjoying it, but... We'll see how that goes. Either way, I will be back in May with, a, no, I won't. Uh, yeah, I'll be back at the end of the May, uh, at the end of the May, at the end of May with my wrap up. In the meantime, there should be one more video coming to you of the last of the April purchases. Have a great month, BookTube.